I'm very, very happy to be here with you guys and be, oh, to have the honor to be your moderator. So maybe uh, we can begin with the first, yeah, with the first uh, question. And the first question is, uh, have you affected positively or negatively by the global goals? And uh, if I can give you a hint for my, from my perspective and my life, uh, education, I didn't have that right. Because I was born in Iran and I grew up in Iran and Afghans don't have a right to study. And I didn't have that one. And equality, equality that one also, I missed it. I missed it, I didn't have it. And it's very, yeah. Tell me, or tell everyone. So for me, the global goals are, I mean, I think the big strength with the global goals is that we now have a common plan. Uh, we have a common agreement of what we need to do and a holistic plan of what we need to do to kind of, I don't know, save the world. Uh, but it's, it's that, right? It's a plan. Uh, and I think the most important part is kind of what do you do with that plan? How do you act and how do you get to action? And I think we have, I mean, we're, we're halfway, right? Almost. Um, and we need to kind of really get that going. And that was a big process in kind of anchoring and agreeing on those goals and what we do now and how do we make sure that we actually collaborate. Uh, I'm not really fond of the kind of the game and the competition part because that's not really how I see it. I really see it as kind of how do we join forces in this. Yeah. Very nice, very nice. And you? I can share my perspective um, as an artist and something that I recognize in or what's missing from the global goals is that there's no specific goal connected to arts and cultural expression within the 17 sustainable development goals. It's not formally recognized alongside the three pillars of social and environmental and economic development. So for me, when a lot of companies might want to work with this framework to help build their sustainability strategies, they're at risk of recognizing the importance of artistic and cultural expression and really building that into their organization and their values and their sustainability work. So for me, also thinking about the sustainability goals, I also see that we can use art and culture and feed it into every single goal in a way that is connecting to all of them. And I also think this is why it's so important, like an event like today and what happens afterwards, because we're really exploring how we can connect it to creativity at the same time. Yeah. Maybe I can comment on both of you. I, I totally agree that it's, uh, it's about the holistic picture. It's common, but it's also not including everything, but a lot of things at least, so that we don't uh, go into a rabbit hole chasing a, a few metrics and lose track of the whole. Uh, but then uh, I, I think one of the reasons maybe that art, uh, uh, the arts is not included might be that uh, we are in a world where we try to measure everything. <laughs> not everything can be measured. And maybe some of the most important things cannot be measured. Mm. Uh, and that is something I think is extremely important when working with the global goals to also consider things that are not uh, able to put into metrics. Yeah. The things in between. Yes. Yeah, and also thinking about kind of, uh, I mean, the goals are really the what, right? What we want to achieve. And then thinking about like the next step is then of course the how. How would we achieve them? And I think arts and culture has a big role to play in that how, in how we achieve them and how we get together and how we gather people around something. And that's where also kind of art and creativity plays a big role. Yeah. yeah. Very nice, very nice. I have another question because uh, we all are creative people. Yes, uh, we are all uh, do uh, some kind of art. And uh, what do you think that uh, art and uh, creativity in, in whole and playfulness can help, help your business and how you use the creativity and playfulness in your business and job? or in your personal life. Yeah. Maybe I can start. I think yeah. curiosity is okay. essential. And like you say, the playfulness comes with it. You're yeah. curious and open and want to explore new perspectives, learn new things, hear about another con totally different way of life. Yeah. Uh, for instance, you. Uh, so I think that is uh, a, a strong source. 
to build from. And um, we haven't come as far as we should. Like you said, it's gone halfway and we've come more or less nowhere. And uh, that brings me to something that uh, I've been a, bi a bit engaged in, uh, only on the, in the, uh, not like the core group, but the inner development goals that we, we need to build capabilities within ourselves and within groups and collectives uh, in order to have the capacities to transform yeah. together. And maybe we haven't been cultivating those um, you know, um, abilities within ourselves. And we need to do that in order to reach the global goals. Yeah, very nice, very nice. Yes, I agree. And I th really do think it is essential that we practice playfulness um, as a way to connect with our environments and with the people uh, around us, because we need to create new experiences. And for me, I think in, on a personal level, when I think about some of the ways that I approach maybe some more serious topics around perhaps environmentalism and circularity and identity, having worked as an artist with textiles in the past, for me, it's always been about exploring, okay, and being a bit of a magpie and thinking about how can I reuse materials and kind of get people to question and consider what might be form or known as waste and how can we create something out of it. So for me, like playfulness is about getting hands on as well and like being crafty at the same time. And it's also about, you know, this is also a playground for us here today and coming to these cultural events, you know, whether it's uh, an event like this or whether it's a festival, I think that's also how I approach play, being going outdoors and meeting people. Yeah, very nice. And I think also we dare, need to kind of dare to be playful and that dare to be uh, thinking kind of thinking playful because I think also when communicating, we are we have a challenge, of course, in communicating where we are as a world. And I think if we're staying too much to the facts and if we're still kind of stringent on having to, having it to be correct, we will kind of miss a lot of people when we, we talk about it. So we need to kind of find playful ways, of course, without being naive and without kind of, uh, we need to tell it as it is, but we need to find new, new ways of doing so. Um, and I think for me, creativity, I wouldn't, uh, I'm, not, I'm not an artist, I'm not a creative, I mean, I'm a business person, but I work in a creative industry. So for, for me, it's a lot about kind of finding new collaborations or bringing different parts together, where it's not about so much about doing new things, but having people do what they're really, really good at, but doing that together. And I think one, one example that I like to take from, from our business, I work at Spotify, and we brought uh, creators and scientists together to do uh, audio short stories based on science uh, to really get kind of a listener into what can the world look like in 50 years. And the scientists did what they were really good at, like looking at, looking at science and kind of what could the future look like. And the creators did what they were really good at, writing stories. But they were doing that in collaboration and doing that in a new way. And I think that's where the kind of the magic happens when people do what they're really, really good at, but do that together. Very nice, very nice. Oh, a lot of stuff, but all positive and all good. And I'm very happy to, yeah, get that information from all of you. Thank you so much. And uh, there is another thing that I uh, talk about, uh, the negative part of, we can call it a game. Why we call it a game? Because uh, from my perspective, it is a negative thing and uh, how, how is your or what is your thought about it and uh, is your job or your company that you're working in are a competitor or yeah tell me I some I heard somebody say uh, once that uh, I mean we've heard about survival of the fittest since forever in school and so forth but humanity uh, managed to get where we are today uh, through co collaboration yeah. and we would have n n never made it to here without collaborating as the, s the foundation and I guess I'm from a, an outdoor company Houdini Sportswear so I'm in business so uh, and and it's saturated with competition and we have to shift out of that um, way of working because collaboration has to be the foundation also there and maybe I, I realized then that with playfulness, you can have maybe a spice of competition at the top, uh, and that's fine, but collaboration needs to be um, the foundation, which is why we work at open source, for instance. We need to share our knowledge and insights 
with our peers and colleagues in the business rather than uh, keep them to ourselves. Yeah. It's a much more fun of work <laughs> way of working yeah. as well. I understand. I totally agree. And I have, I've actually not experienced the kind of the rivalry or competition in sustainability fields. I really, I mean, I really see it as a kind of a collaborative arena and you get just like happy if a competitor does something brave that just like paves the way for you, right? So it's, it's out and of course, saves the world as well. But it's, it's, so I think there's, there's only winners in this game of collaboration. Yeah. Um, and to that kind of open sourcing and sharing, I mean, both kind of successes and failures, that's really what's going to take us further. Yeah. Holding yes, that absolutely. inside the boundaries of companies will not do that. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, I think for when it comes to rivalry, um, I think it's a good thing because it helps to strengthen the dynamics in the game and it helps to push us all and we can become inspired by one another at the same time. And I also believe that by perhaps inviting some of our rivals in to work with us, um, and whether that's activists or artists to work with businesses, I think we can work together in the game uh, to create good change. Very nice, very nice, very, very nice. And the last question, the last question is about uh, how or what is uh, the goal that you are passionate about and uh, what is the solution how you can fix it or what is <laughs> your solution to fix that issue? Simple question. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, it's a good question. I cannot choose one. I have to choose them all. Yeah. I, I truly Feel free. think <laughs> that is uh, the way we have to do it. Because otherwise we run, go into one of those rabbit holes and not real, maybe not even realizing that we're heading in the wrong direction. Um, in our case, choosing the wrong fiber, which creates deforestation somewhere or, or whatever, without knowing it. But if we take the holistic picture, look at the SDGs as a holistic system, or as a checklist or whatever, so that you, you know that you have everything, you, you, ha you have a clue about everything, so you can actually navigate uh, in the right direction. And otherwise, uh, I, I, there's, there's nothing of value with the SDGs if you don't consider them all. Yeah. I totally, yeah. I actually agree, because that's, that's the real value of it, to have this like holistic, even if it's not all inclusive, it's still kind of a really good uh, roadmap on everything we need to consider. Uh, so I think that's, and the, the kind of, <laughs> the key to solving it is actually, I think, it's really, really thinking about where do you put this like 80,000 hours that Jose Gonzalez was talking about, like your career, or what kind of, kind of what superpowers do you have as, as a human being, and how do you leverage that for the greater good? Mm -hmm. so how, do you how do you put your skills, what you're really, really good at, and combining that what the world needs, and how can that, uh, that's like really how you can drive change. Very nice, very nice. Yeah, I really, that really resonates me, with me as well, and what you say about how do we really put, what is finding our passions and putting them into action, and like really, I think that's what also gives me hope as well. It's about finding and discovering what you really love and how do you channel that energy in the right way to put it into action. But then going back into the goal, uh, it's really hard to say, but of course would love to say all of them. But for me, the one that stands out the most is about taking climate action, taking urgent action to combat climate change um, and its impacts. And for me, a dream solution would be to start my own cult cultural space where I could invite artists and people from different community groups, diverse groups from across the world to come and to work on collaborative events and projects together and to overcome these challenges together. So that would be my dream solution. Yeah. Thank you. Can Thank I you. add something? Yeah, yeah. yeah. About sure. priorities, yeah. because I agree in a way, and there's uh, the Stockholm Resilience Center they have done a, mm. a different way of approaching or visualizing the goals. It's called the wedding cake. Yeah. The foundation is the biosphere because nothing will ever work without the biosphere in, yeah. in balance. And then there's society and at the top there's the economy. So in order to make things uh, work the way we want to and create the world that we, we're dreaming of, we have to have the biosphere, the foundation and then society intact which means poverty and equality and all that. And then we can have a thriving economy. Yeah. And if we start compromising with all those, those two on the economy side, which is where I have responsibility as a CEO, 
w we're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> and it's irresponsible uh, and uh, yeah. Yeah. And That's uh, where I think that the, the youth this morning were talking a lot about, I mean, hope but action and how we need to stop compromising. Yeah. A and uh, we're continuing to compromise all the time, yeah. everywhere in society. Yeah. It's kind of frustrating. Yeah, I understand. So I, I think, yeah. And as if we had kind of room for those compromises, yes, exactly. we're acting as if there we had that opportunity, which we don't really. I think it's really time for some brutal honesty yeah. uh, in society, in politics for sure, <laughs> but also in business. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Brutal honesty will help ourselves be honest to ourselves and to our groups in which we work with and accelerate our, cha uh, our way of change. Yeah. Totally yeah. agreed. We need to be, you know, embrace as big bu as businesses and as companies to embrace vulnerability and be open to criticism because that's the only way we're going to make change happen yeah yeah super thank you so much for being here and thank you so much thank for you. listening to us thank, thank you, you for having us thank you thank you so much heidi <laughs> and the panelists i'll so. I think i'm curious to ask a few questions for you eva if you guys want to uh, you can stay, but um, Eva, you're sort of a, a league on your own, I think. Uh, you've been working with, uh, you represent maybe an older generation here today. Yes, uh, in, in I, old, I, I feel <laughs> old too, which is great. Uh, and Houdina would say it's like on, a, on the league on its own. You've been in this game for a very long time. What, what advice do you have to us and to younger if they, they sort of strive to become a CEO? How do you make more CEOs as brave as you are? I don't know. You have Maybe not think too much about things before you go ahead and, and do it. <laughs> but no, I, I think I have a lot to learn from here. I, okay. I, this is a fantastic uh, venue and a group of people and uh, topics. I, I love it. A and many times, Throughout the years, we've been in so many conferences and it's very technocratic, you know, the, the, the talking points are about this new te technology or this bunch of new technologies that is going to save us. And it's, it's of course not true. Here we're talking about the, the things that matter and the things that I think will drive change, which is the human aspects. Uh, it's not only the mind, it's the heart and the soul. It's about meeting between and creativity and the arts, music. Uh, uh, it's really amazing. So I'm here learning today. Nice. So, so one of and the advice to the, to, the, to the CEOs then be more in the sort of more the space in between yes. and the more creative space. Talk about uh, the stuff that matters. Like collaborating across yeah. sectors with academia and research and artists. Yeah. We, do, we do that too little as well at Udini. So we're, we're far from perfect, but it's a, it's a journey. Another curious question I have, again, because I think Houdini really stands out in the, in the fast fashion industry. You, you, you have a super interesting design philosophy, uh, how you apply your, 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 your product cycle and, and sort of when you design. Do you want to just share a little bit about that? Um, yeah, well, there's, there's a lot to talk about, but maybe I can just mention a couple of things. And we have a checklist. We don't like uh, complicated like booklets to, to know how to navigate in the daily operations. But uh, then we have a checklist on how to design our products. And the first uh, question we need to ask ourselves is, does this product deserve existence? Yeah, I love and that. Yeah, yeah, and it's, uh, it, it sounds banal, but but it's extremely important today where we you know, push out products all the time, especially fast fashion. Uh, so that's one. Yeah. Uh, will it age with beauty is another age one of my beauty. favorite. Yes, uh, yes. We, we can, as we say at Houdini, we can live large with less and live large is important. It's not about having less and you know, sacrificing life. It's, it's not about that. We can create so much more rewarding ways of life if we stop thinking about stuff and commercial over, uh, like over consumption, pushing products and anxiety on people, but rather, uh, yeah, Imp Thank focus on the important stuff in life. Thank you so much. So inspiring, all of you, and super inspiring to, to have you here and share uh, some of your thoughts on um, 
since I work with uh, you know very much the corporate world and to to make people more brave like you guys uh, is super inspiring. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.